Today I'm going to show how to add clothing to a human generator character model from both human generator and make human and then how to start modifying the garments by editing the textures and the mesh. The first step is to just select a base mesh that you want to work with. The differences between the gender options are the implied anatomy and some of the clothing options that are available. Once you've selected a gender and a skin tone you can click generate human and then you can adjust the body and face options either through randomization or going through all of the individual settings. But once you're done, you click finish creation phase. Give it a moment and a new set of options will appear in the panel, including clothing and footwear. Sometimes all of the options that are available don't appear the first time you click in the panel. So you'll want to explore what other items are available under the different drop down menus. But here I'm just going to choose a simple dress because it would make a good base that we could add unique details to and edit the texture to make it a different garment. I also picked some shoes because they're the most neutral design that I could most easily modify to look like a different style. Once you have your clothing selected in Human Generator, you'll need to bake the textures so that you can paint over them. If you just click bake, you'll get a warning that you have to use Cycles, which is the render engine. And then you can just press bake again and give it some time, but you should see a loading bar pop up that shows the texture baking in progress. Now I've been having some trouble where the last texture won't bake and there's some issue with the ones that do, as you can see here. So I'm just gonna show you how to address that problem. You wanna open up another panel by hovering on the right hand corner of any window until you can see the crosshair appear. Click and drag away from the edge so that a new panel opens. And then in the upper left, you can select a new function for that window. And the one we want here is the shader editor. The problem is that the wrong texture map is in the main color slot. So you just need to open the folder icon and select the correct one. Now I'm going to walk you through removing some of the settings that allow this item of clothing to be deformed to any of the body types that you could have selected in the earlier steps because we don't need them. First, you select the human character and in the human generator tab, open the apply modifiers section. You uncheck keep shape keys and then apply the selected modifiers. Then if you want, say if you're going to use this dress on another character, you can unparent it from the animation rig with Alt-P and keep transforms to leave it in place. To start editing the textures, you'll want to go under the Texture Paint tab at the top of Blender. And you'll want to set the viewport shading to material preview to see all of the texture layers at work, like the roughness and the bump map called a normal map. All of your painting tools are in this right hand panel at the top for tool properties. So once you know you're working on the correct map, you can scroll down, select a color and start painting. If you paint in the 2D view, it'll appear on the 3D model and vice versa. You can also dump a single color over everything using the paint bucket tool. Like I noted here, I should have mentioned that if you open this drop down menu, you can change the blend mode, which allows some of the original texture details to show through. Make sure that when your changes are complete, you go under image and save as. If you don't want to overwrite the original, you can give it a new name. Real quick, I'm just going to enter edit mode with the tab key and show how you can select groups of vertices like this edge loop with alt or option and then click. 
and perform basic modeling like extrude by tapping E and then moving things around with the G key. Changing views from front to side and top like I'm doing here with your number pad hotkeys makes it easier to make adjustments in all three dimensions. Now I'm not sure why the x-axis symmetry button I had enabled earlier wasn't working, but to save time I'll just show you how you can mirror your changes across the mesh by going under Mesh and choosing Symmetry. If the side that gets mirrored across isn't the one that you were working on, you can change the direction of the symmetry after the fact in this lower left-hand panel, as long as you didn't click anything else. Here I'm just adding some edge loops in between these long extrusions I made so that when I animate the garment, it will bend more smoothly. Here I'm just going to show you how you could remove some geometry. First I'll hide two entire face loops with the H key to make it easier to select everything in between by hovering my mouse over the remaining mesh and clicking L. Because this mesh was modeled with a seam along the side, I also need to change the selection mode to normal so that it will select everything that's physically connected. Then I can click delete and unhide the parts of the mesh that I hid before. I can select the entire bottom portion with L again, and then using G and Z, I can move it up in the Z axis, S to scale it in a little from the side, and R to rotate it to be a little closer to the angle of the edge that I want to stitch it to. Then to join these two open edges together, I can click Control or Command E for my edge options, select Bridge Edge Loops, which will actually fill this in with a row of faces, but that's not what we want because those new faces wouldn't have the right texture displayed on them. So then we can just enable Merge, and it will merge nearby vertices instead of filling that gap. From there, I'm going to dive straight into Make Human, where I can modify the body shape quite a bit, but for this demo I'll head straight to the Geometries tab. And the first tab is actually the clothing. You can scroll through and click each one, but you need to deselect previous selections or items in the same spot will overlap. There aren't many options here, but go ahead and pick a few, and once you're ready you can choose Export in the upper left. I had FBX already selected, which is what you want, but by default it will have the first option selected, so make sure you change it to FBX, which will keep your textures intact. From there you can go right back into Blender and import the FBX that you saved. Here I'll show how you can do a little more texture editing and just hide the Make Human meshes. Back in Texture Paint with the viewport set to Material Preview again, you can select a color from the color picker. And here I'm showing that you can paint over everything you see, but if you want to isolate something like just the overalls here, you can enter edit mode briefly and select just the area you want. I'm using L. And then go back out of edit mode and press this cube looking button, which will mask off anything that wasn't selected in edit mode. I forgot to turn on my screencast keys so you can see what I'm doing. I hit tab to enter edit mode and L to select the whole mesh. And just showing 
you the difference between having the shirt or the overalls selected. And again, you can dump an entire color using the paint bucket. Another reminder here to save your images when you're happy with them. Now let's say you want to paint just a few faces of the mesh, like the metal parts that connect the straps. In that case, you might want to go into edit mode and select those areas one by one, like I'm doing here, in a loop of faces. That's holding Alt or Option and clicking on an edge between the faces that are connected this particular model is nicely optimized without any of the unnecessary back faces. You can also use circle select to deselect by pressing C and then holding the middle mouse button as you paint. You may also want to add some new edges to give your paint a more logical boundary. Here I'm just selecting two vertices and then tapping J, which will cut a new edge between them. Don't choose Fill or F because that will just draw an edge on top, which won't work as a boundary and it'll cause other problems down the line. Then you can click one face at a time or hold Control and click along the path that you want to add to that selection, holding Shift when you want to add more to that selection in another area. So now I'm going to go back out and paint these metal parts a gray base color. And then I'll add what's called a roughness map to my texture set. And on that, I'll paint solid black on the same areas where I want it to be shiny. Now I'm going to show you how to add the clothing that we made in Make Human to the Human Generator character. I just set up a new character and I'll give her some clothing that will cover the same areas as our overalls and t-shirt so that the Human Generator tool will automatically mask away the unnecessary parts of mesh underneath the clothing. This is just a good optimization step. Then I can just find those unwanted pieces in the animation rig and delete them. Import your FBX, and as you can see, make human characters come in almost double the size of a real human, so we're going to scale that down. And I'm just showing you how I make sure I have all of the garments I want selected. And I'm going to change my pivot point to the 3D cursor so that you can see when I move and scale the mesh, the movement originates where the 3D cursor is placed. And then I can just set that back to world origin with shift S. From here, it's a matter of adjusting the scale and the rotation and the position a little bit. And then because our character's feet are hidden, and I forgot to mask that area of the body off with some human gen shoes, I can just enter edit mode with the character mesh selected, select each of them with L, and then delete them. You might want to go in and make some small adjustments to things like this neckline, but the next step is to select the new clothing out of edit mode and attach it to the animation rig con using control P and then select Automatic Weights. I'll 
a last step, which will lead into the next tutorial I want to do, showing how to animate this character's face, is to go back into the Human Generator tab and choose the expression, switch it to the face rig, and press the automatic face rig button. This generates the bones that your character will need, but I'll get into some more specifics about setting that up in the next tutorial. Thanks.